Hello Amigans, today I'm going to show you my favorite classic Amiga application, Nutex Lightwave 3D, running on the most powerful Amiga system ever, Aeon's new Amiga 1 X1000. Here's a spot where I spend a lot of time, the Amiga section of my home office. I have several classic and next generation Amiga or Amiga-like systems. The newest is this black tower under my desk, the Aeon Amiga 1 X1000. From left to right here I have a uh, SAM 440 based uh, computer from Relic, the red one, uh, that runs Amiga OS 4.1. And uh, next to that is an Amiga 1200 classic computer from Commodore. Uh, it's running Lightwave on the screen right now. And to the right of that is a MorphOS machine. It's actually a Mac Mini uh, running the MorphOS uh, operating system. There's Lightwave running on that. Uh, I have a, a PC that is running Eros, uh, Icarus 1.4, uh, running directory opus right there. And here's the uh, Amiga X1000, Amiga 1X1000 twin screens. I've got two graphics cards in there. I uh, have WikiChat, uh, an IRC client running on the right screen there. And the larger screen, we're showing our title card for our Lightwave video. One of the keys to getting some classic Amiga 68000 programs to run well on a next generation Amiga 1 system is screen promotion. The old programs a lot of times aren't aware of the modern graphics modes, but you can use software like OS4's included Screens Preferences Editor or utilities like Mode Pro, which I still use, to hijack screens and promote them to a different resolution. Here's Mode Pro running on my system. I've identified several custom screen modes that Lightwave calls. For example, layout defaults to a screen resolution of 672 pixels by 544 pixels uh, at eight colors. I'm using Mode Pro here to promote that screen to a 1920 by 1200 RGB 16 high color screen. That's a 16-bit screen that supports up to 64,000 colors. I'm reducing that with Mode Pro down to 8 colors. You might be wondering why I'm not using a 256 color 8-bit screen and reducing that to 8 colors. Well, I tried that first and for some reason that mode performed rather poorly with Lightwave. Everything was slowed down. Works better with a high color screen. I don't know why, but in any case, I've reduced it down to eight colors and Lightwave now flies on my X1000. You can see we have a huge amount of real estate, just a giant canvas to build our scene on. Uh, Lightwave is just very speedy too on the X1000. You can see as I, I click the panel buttons, how, how quickly the panels pop up onto the screen. One downside about this giant amount of real estate is that the user interface elements are on the small side. Maybe a bit hard to read the text if you've got old eyes like mine, but, but we'll get by. Let's, let's build a quick scene just to see how this works. We're going to load an object. We're going to go into the animals directory and an oldie but a goodie, the cow object. And uh, here's our cow. Let's uh, change our view to the camera view. This is what the camera sees. And I believe we are looking at the hind end of the cow. So, so let's rotate that cow around. I prefer to look at my cows from the front. And uh, we're gonna, on the first frame of the animation, we're going to move the cow off to some distance. Uh, maybe rotate it a little that way. And uh, you, you make a keyframe in Lightwave by hitting the enter key twice. Lightwave defaults to a 30 frame default animation, but you can change that to any number of frames. You can add frames later. Uh, we're going to just go to the last frame right now, and I'm going to move that cow much closer in the frame. Maybe rotate her just a bit. Hit enter twice, and then we're going to just scrub back and forth through the animation, and we can see the cow moving forward. Uh, let's, let's make things a little bit more dynamic with some camera movement. We're editing the object right now. We're going to switch to editing the camera, and uh, we're going to go to the last frame, 30, frame 30, and I'm going to hit enter twice to make a keyframe for the uh, camera to be in this position at the end of the animation, but at the beginning of the animation, I'm going to raise the camera up and uh, rotate it down to look down upon the scene and make a keyframe there. And now you can see when I scrub back and forth, uh, the camera drops, the cow moves and rotates. 
and I'll show you something now that's not quite working. Maybe somebody out there has a solution for it. I haven't been able to find it. Uh, but on the classic Amiga, you could uh, render a wireframe preview of the animation at this point. And it usually takes a while to do that on a, on a classic Amiga, but it's pretty quick uh, on the X1000. But we'll see what happens here. We're going to go preview, make preview. We're going to make every frame a wireframe preview, tell it OK. And look how quickly it renders out the wireframes. But here's the problem. We end up with a blank box on a classic Amiga. You can hit play here and watch that wireframe animation repeat, but we could just get a blank screen there. Uh, fortunately, the X1000 is so fast that you could just scrub back and forth pretty quickly to, to get an idea of how the animation is going to move. Here I've loaded one of the uh, sample scenes that comes with Lightwave. It's the famous space fighter scene. If I scrub uh, forward in the, in the uh, project, you'll see a couple of spacecraft uh, zooming through space, flying toward a planet. And just to show you how quickly Lightwave renders, uh, I'm going to press F9 to render the current frame. I've got a CyberGraphics plugin installed that, that's going to give me a nice 24-bit um, view of, of the final scene. Uh, hit F9, renders the current frame. F10 renders the entire animation, but we're going to hit F9 for right now. And it goes black for a second, and then uh, the CyberGraphics image pops up want to see something really nice, uh, I'm going to go into the uh, camera panel and that was a default resolution of, of video medium which was probably 640 by 480, 720 by 480, something like that. I'm going to go to a custom size and let's render a 1600 by 1200 image. Hit F9, the cyber graphics preview will show a nice big colorful image of the two spacecraft flying toward that nice blue planet. Here's the Space Fighters animation rendered to a medium resolution and played with M Player. And here are some sample Lightwave animations from the example scenes that have been kicking around all these years. Upcoming is a flying logo animation I did back in the day. It's nothing too good to be frank, but at least it renders a whole lot faster nowadays. Let's take a look at a, uh, another Lightwave project I've made. I'm going to just load a new scene and that's going to clear out the old scene. Uh, this is a uh, project that I actually created with Lightwave years ago on my Amiga 1200. Uh, it's, it's just a still frame of some text that uh, says the word Amiga. Very nice. Uh, it's just, a, it's just a, uh, a postscript font that we've typed the word Amiga and extruded it out, giving it some gold coloring and a nice bevel. Uh, I'm going to switch this to a pretty high resolution. We're going to do 1920 by 1200. That's the full size of my monitor. And whoops, let's, let's get that right. 1200. And I'm going to show you how to save, because because heretofore we've not saved anything as far as our, our rendered output. You go to the record menu, you can save an animation, save uh, RGB images. We're going to do that. I'm going to have it go to my temp partition. And I'm just going to call it Amiga Type. And it's going to be a 24-bit IFF file. Uh, I'm going to come down to render. And we're only going to, it's a one frame uh, scene here, it's not an animation. I'm going to go ahead and render that, and it's going to come up pretty quickly. Okay, here's the cyber graphics uh, plug in display of the image. Uh, here's a problem I'm having, I haven't got to the, to the bottom of it yet. Uh, you notice we uh, made a 1920 pixel wide rendering, but my cyber graphics renderer uh, seems to max out at 1600 pixels wide. So you'll see the left and right of the image is. Uh, clipped off. But uh, what we saved uh, as far as the render is the full resolution image. I'm going to switch back to my workbench screen. Uh, look on that temp partition. Uh, make a type. There we go. And that's the full image uh, shown in 24-bit glory in multi-view. 
There were a couple of more utility programs that I needed to configure to get the LightWave set up functioning properly on my X1000. Let me show you those now. Uh, I'm going to go into my work partition, uh, into my new tech drawer, and into programs, and then I have a utilities drawer. Uh, there's two, two things I need to set up here. The first is called change mode, and what this does is configure the resolution to screen mode that modeler will use. And uh, it's going to look for the mod config file within our toaster assign. And I'm going to go into programs, lightwave support, and then it finds mod config and you tell it OK. And it picks, uh, it gives you a list of screen modes that you can pick to have a, a modeler default to. And uh, that's, that's a list of your available screen modes. You just uh, give the program a number. And the other utility to configure, uh, if you want to use the Cyber Graphics plugin like I'm doing, is the Cyber Graphics Render Prefs. So I run that, and that allows you to pick the screen mode that uh, the Cyber Graphics plugin uses to show you the uh, preview of your uh, render. Just uh, select the screen mode and pick which one you want. And my problem is uh, 1600 by 1232 bit is max, and I would like that to be full HD, at least 1920 by 1080. Doesn't seem to be an option for me. I'll try to explore that another day. Now there are two ways to run Modeler. One is to click on the Modeler button from within LightWave Layout. The other is to run it directly from uh, Workbench, and that's when the uh, configuring the default uh, resolution comes into play, because otherwise LightWave Modeler will just pick up the resolution that Layout was running in. Uh, I use uh, Add Menu to add apps to my Workbench menu bar, and I will pick LightWave Modeler now and run that directly. There we go, we, we're running it in a nice high resolution screen. Uh, there's a little bit of an artifact right here, this, this blue line that appears uh, right, right on that line there. Uh, if I move the panel slightly, it disappears. I don't know what it's all about, but it's not a big deal. Uh, let's, let's do a, a quick modeling exercise. Uh, I'm going to load our cow object. Okay, here I've loaded that uh, familiar cow object again, and uh, let's turn on our, our uh, perspective preview, go into display options, and switch that to solid, and then uh, we have a wireframe preview of the object that we can rotate around. Let me show, show you a little exercise you can do. We're going to switch to another layer within model, Modeler by pressing that button right there. And if I press the button, the lower button on layer 1, we can see the object that's still in layer 1 while we're working within layer 2. And what I thought we would do is uh, uh, blast a hole into the side of this cow, uh, really drill a hole with a Boolean operation. Uh, we're going to go to Modify. No, we're going to go to Objects, Disk, and let's just draw out a nice big circle. And I'm going to extrude that out in the top view. Hit enter to make that. That's an extruded disk. Okay, we're going to go back to layer one as the foremost layer and click on this lower button to make the, the layer with the extruded disk be our uh, background layer. Okay, we're going to go into Tools, uh, the little tool panel here. brings up a list of menu options down the left. We're going to choose Boolean Operation and do Subtract. Tell it OK. Busy for just a few seconds. And look, we've, we've drilled a hole right into the side of this cow. I'm going to turn off the second layer so we only see the first layer. Uh, zoom in a bit here and rotate that around and this poor cow has got a tunnel going right through her side. Evil evil light wave uh, engineer here. We'll make that bigger.
There you have it, LightWave 3D on the latest Amiga 1 system. This has not been a comprehensive LightWave tutorial by any means, but I hope it does serve to show that one of the best classic Amiga creative applications can still be used productively. On the latest version of Amiga OS, which at this time is Amiga OS 4.1 from Hyperion Entertainment. Thank you for watching my video, it was fun putting it together. And thank you especially to KTAD for his software tool video clipper and for letting me test it out.